Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> I'm doing that so that I can sound like a crazy person because it's, it's, it's not how I actually am, you know, don't worry. But I'm reviewing a show about crazy people. I'm reviewing a show about the crazy people who made it, apparently, called Ratchet. And this is the new Netflix show. It just came out yesterday. And, of course, as a professional reviewer on YouTube, I should be watching it and reviewing it for you. In fact, I look forward to it uh, all the way since the spring. I was like... You know what? That sounds like a good show to watch and review. Out of all the different things coming out, like, even even more so than, like, new release movies that were gonna come out, come out in theaters. So, yeah, needless to say, I was excited for this show. I wasn't going into it saying, Ugh, yeah, oh, God, oh, no, you know, like a lot of people, you know, I understand. A lot of people, they have low expectations because it seems like for some reason everything that comes out nowadays, everything is bad in terms of, like, you'll have these really high expectations and they'll get let down and you'll feel like, God, everything's just going to be bad. I can't look forward to the new Avengers movie. I can't look forward to the new uh, crime thriller movie because I know what they do. I know what they're about. I know what they're going to do in terms of the agenda shit, which <laughs> we'll get to in the show. And, you know, that that's the thing. Like, everyone has these really low expectations, and... <sighs> To be honest, this show couldn't even reach my lowest expectations. Yeah, that's right. This show was trash. I only got through two episodes. I'm not going to watch any more. There are eight episodes, so that's a fourth of the show. I would say that's a pretty damn good... I, I, I mean, I just... I don't see it getting any better. I don't... I don't want to put myself through that where I waste eight hours and then still say the same thing that I'm going to say right now. This show is fucking garbage. It's full of itself. It's, uh, we'll talk about how full of itself it is. Because they even have the nerve to use copyrighted music. You know how lots of YouTubers get copyright strikes all the time because they use music? Or they use some sort of something that studios go, uh-oh, uh, strike that channel, you're out, strike, 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 you're out. Uh, well, on this show, they decide to literally take full snippets of music from Hitchcock movies. Vertigo, uh, was, was that the... There's one where it goes, dun, 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 dun. And they use that. They use the full thing. How do they get away with that? What the hell? Then they use the psycho music. They use full music. I thought this was an original show. It was different for the reanimator. With the reanimator, you know, you had sort of like, it was like a riff on the Psycho theme, a little s snippet of the Psycho theme that they then turned into their own music, their own songs. But with this, oh my God, you had the nerve to use copyrighted music. Are they going to get in trouble for this or what? And on top of that, that's not even the worst part. No, that's not the worst part. This show starts off, and to be honest, I liked episode one. I would give episode one like a B or a B minus. I think that it had promise. I liked some plots that were going on. I liked, uh, I liked the opening sequence, even though I thought that uh, 
it was sort of tame. You know, there was lots of cutting away, lots of, uh, you know, just artsy blood crap where there's not as much blood as there should be. So they, they do this like artsy fartsy thing with the blood to make it look like there's more blood than that. It's just, I do not like Sarah Paulson at all as an actress, as this character, anything. She does a terrible job at playing Nurse Ratchet. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Nurse Ratchet is one of the greatest villains of movie history, uh, non-comic book villains. She is a fantastic villain. She is cold. She is evil. She is just, she's heartless too. And on this show, they immediately get rid of that. No, she's not heartless. She's got a heart just for, you know, certain things. So at the end of the episode, of course, it's Sarah Paulson. So she's got to cry. And so she cries at the end of this episode. And she's like in full tears. And of course, she has a heart. And she wants to help out uh, what it turns out to be her brother. So... Uh, that's, that's that, you know, bye-bye, uh, Nurse Ratchet, because that's not Nurse Ratchet I know. <laughs> Nurse Ratchet I know never shed a fucking tear, uh, as far as I know. Y you know what I mean? I thought that this, uh, portrayal of Nurse Ratchet was bad, to say the least. She was robotic, she was, uh... Not cold, because cold would imply that that would be a good thing, but she was monotone. Like, she was like, I'm playing a character who's apparently evil, and so I'm going to be as monotone as possible, and I'm not going to have any sort of uh, emotion. Oh, oh no, my brother! Ah! <laughs> oh, my brother! Oh, he needed help! Ah! Yeah, there goes that villain from that fantastic, incredible 70s movie that I knew. Bye-bye, uh, Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> and anyway, the reason why I'm spoiling is because I don't give a flying fuck. I mean, this, this show, it invites spoilers because you think, it's Nurse Ratchet. What are they going to do? And then, like, also, like, I, I don't know, it's just, I'm just so flabbergasted, because I haven't even gotten to the worst part yet, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about what I'm going to say, so that I don't sound like as big of a jackass as I've sounded before, but right off in episode two, things got really unpleasant, because it seemed like uh, these people with nothing wrong with them were going to have lobotomies. And I thought, that's really sickening. It really kind of made me start to feel, uh, you know, my it started to make my stomach feel sick uh, just watching it uh, and thinking about it. You know, you have this this kid there, and uh, he, he's, he's like, you know, my mom says I daydream. And, and there's this other woman, and uh, let's get to her. Let's get right to her, because I knew what they were going to do as soon as they did it. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> she's like, I don't want my uh, condition released to the public. And then Nurse Ratchet, of course, has to say, you're a lesbian. I knew a long, long, because your facial features, your uh, facial structure, uh, you're a lesbian. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Ah. So, yeah, you, you know what they're doing? Uh, wink, wink, wink. Uh, and so, anyways, uh, propaganda, r red alert right there, because, <sighs> okay, and then, it, it all connects together, that's why I'm going, I, I didn't think it was bad at first, because I thought, you know, it's realistic, that happened back then, but it connects to all the other propaganda in this episode, and in this series, the fact that, um, uh, they make Nurse Ratchet a lesbian, uh, when she's not a lesbian at all. I mean, I don't know where they got that idea. Of course, they have to turn every character nowadays, I swear to God, every fictional character, they got to turn gay, they got to turn lesbian, 
They got to turn black. They got to turn female. They got to turn Hispanic. They got to turn Asian. Uh, never turn a Native American, though, you know, because they don't really care about Native Americans in Hollywood. They just care about certain types of people. And it's funny, too, because this show, it's like it was right in front of me having Sarah Paulson play Nurse Ratchet. Uh, and I thought, you know, uh, she's she's been capable of playing straight characters before as all actors. I mean, that's another thing, too. Like, actors can play anybody. They don't have to be lesbian to play a lesbian character. And so, I did not presume, I mean, I did not assume that Sarah Paulson would be playing Lap Licker Ratchet. Uh, I thought she would be playing the real Nurse Ratchet that we saw in the 1970s movie. And I thought this is going to be like another great Bates Motel show, of course. And Bates Motel, they did that shit in the last season of uh, trying to make Norman Bates gay, uh, which pissed me off to the nth degree with that, too. Uh, let's not even talk about that, because we'll save that for another time. But And then they have this scene where Nurse Ratchet and her peach, you're eating my peach. And it's like, I thought that was a great scene. I really liked that scene, honestly. I thought that, like, that was, like, the standout scene so far. Because it just seemed like, I don't know, it had, like, a sinister undertone. And it, it was just such a great back and forth. Such a great, clever, little, fun, funny dialogue. Even Sophie liked it. She saw the trailer. Uh, you know, she's probably not going to get to it. Because she has, like, a... Th a th <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't know what happened there. She, Safi has like a thousand videos to catch up on for, before she can start watching new things. <laughs> so, but anyways, so that scene was another lesbian scene, which is referenced later. I mean, I thought like, what? Just, you have to make that and do a lesbian thing too? Just because she's eating her peach? has to mean some alternative meaning, has to just, uh, very juvenile, very uh, superficial, very uh, kitty. It's kitty and goofy and cartoony and, and just one-sided, one-dimensional. And then we get this scene where, probably the worst sequence, where she goes to lunch with another real-life lesbian, Cynthia Nixon. And she played that bitch on Hannibal, season two. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I think that's the only other thing I've seen her in. But they eat lunch together, and basically Cynthia Nixon uh, feeds this oyster to Nurse Ratchet, And it is the most gay thing that I've ever seen. And it's just cringeworthy, because it's like, what? What are you doing? doing? Are you trying to do what I think you're going to do? Is that what you're trying to do on uh, Nurse Ratchet? And then she takes her to a gay bar. To a, a strictly, I think, a lesbian bar. And and there's this whole big thing with like Nurse Ratchet denying it and, say, and, and just, oh god. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking beside... Aside, oh, what other things can we add to this Nurse Ratchet character? She obviously doesn't already have a character, even though the actress for the character won an award for playing the character. So we gotta add more things to this character to make her more three-dimensional. Because obviously they never had three-dimensional female characters in 1970s Hollywood. So we gotta... How about we make Nurse Ratchet gay? Because if we make her gay, then that'll upset the incels. And that'll also make her a stronger female character. And we can also... We can also say that this show is gonna represent queer girls. And they're gonna feel represented because of Nurse Ratchet. A villainous, evil bitch of a character is also gay like them. 
And that's going to make this show the greatest show on television, aside all my other shitty shows that I've already made that also suck donkey dick. You know, that's what it was probably like. That's Ryan Murphy, by the way. Uh, I was doing a little imitation of him. I've never heard him speak, but that's how he probably speaks. <laughs> he, he needs to have a lobotomy, too. <laughs> I felt like I was getting some sort of a, some sort of a procedure as I was watching episode two, uh, drilling into my brain, just right into my fucking brain, seeing this stupid propaganda, artsy, full of itself, uh, one dimension, I mean, how in the hell did they make this show? How did, how did they look? Wh why is it? That they let the stupidest, the worst shows get made. The shows where the writing is worse than the acting. Uh, the, I mean, the, where the writing is... I mean, this show's writing was so bad. I mean, I can't point... The first episode was good, but then they just kept making it worse and worse. It just kept dragging on and on. And it was like, this is just like procedural type shit. Like, this is never going to get... Like, how did how do bad shows get made? Like, that's something that I just can't understand. Like, Netflix really just does approve anything. I, I, they just approve any show that comes on their desk. As long as it's propaganda, uh, something to do with children, like uh, cuties, uh, uh, and Netflix... <coughs> Uh, fuck you, Netflix. <coughs> um, anyways, yeah, this show was fucking stupid. Uh, and then, of course, she does the lobotomy to the priest because he remembers what happened and he remembers that guy's face. And God, was that predictable. Lots of predictable stuff on the show, too. Like, just extremely predictable uh, this this show was written by like a third grader or something because I, I I don't know with this one folks I've seen Ryan Murphy's other shows uh, I saw one episode of American Horror Story uh, never finished watching that piece of shit show uh, fuck that show uh, I, excuse me sorry I saw American Horror Story O.J. Simpson which, at the time, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, but that show was very held back, you know. They didn't have a lot of uh, opportunity to go abstract, to go weird, to go uh, into places where this show goes. Just having really stupid, goofy, cartoony scenarios, stupid, cartoony, goofy plots, you know. And then I watched the worst one. I would say this is better than the worst one, but but the, the propaganda shit, the fact that they took an established character who, to me, didn't really have any sexual preference, or maybe she was just a crazy old cat woman, uh, b because she seemed to be very bitter about uh, sexuality, in my opinion. and But she was very biased against men, it seemed. I mean, it definitely seemed like she treated the female characters in that movie more favorably, but I don't think that that should go as far as to say that she's a lesbian. Uh, but the worst show is that assassination of uh, Gianni Versace. Uh, I watched a couple episodes of that show immediately. <clears throat> Turn it off. Uh, that show was depressing as hell. It was also awful for other reasons. I can't remember why exactly. Uh, I don't really remember why I hated it as much as I did. Sorry, I got cut off yesterday. I had to, I had to leave and stop the recording. Uh, to finish it off, there was one last thing that I sort of couldn't remember uh, that I really wanted to discuss. And that was, there was this very long sequence where... There's this guy who, uh, he, he's into Nurse Ratched, and he, she invites him into her hotel room, or I mean, whatever, and, I mean, motel room, whatever, and, 
or he invites himself in, whatever, and they engage in what is to be known as the most cringy TV sequence that I've seen probably all year. Uh, even cringier than the shit on The Alienist. It was basically uh, her not wanting to have sex, not wanting to kiss. It was very cringeworthy. It's, it's, I mean, t to be honest, she's, Nurse Ratchet is basically on the show like the ultimate Karen. I mean, there's this one scene in episode two where the kid's talking to her and, and he's like, no. And she's like, no, ma'am, you know, it's ma'am, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, but anyways, I hated this show. There's really no other way to put it. I mean, I could continue to roast the show for ages and ages, but I have a lot better things to do. I have better things to watch. And so, yeah, goodbye, everybody.